Greetings everyone, and great here for another H Parts 4 replay. Spawn on the right side as the Magenta Ayubids, we have Fei Chan. Spawn on the left side as the Yellow Byzantians, we have Valdemar. This is Turn Course being built. We have all the sheeple. Of course, Magenta does have access to improved berries, so he has better berries than he does have sheep collection. I don't know what's going with that line of thought. When it comes to other map generation, we've got a deer deposit over here. Need a bit of gold. And his safe one is over here next to a bit of stone with some berries and gold back over here. So both directions are probably a good expansion direction. This map is a little bit choked up with natural foliage and some mesa. This area is traversable, what I can see on the map. For yellow. Looks like almost everything he's had spawned down south. We got deer here, deer even farther from here. More berries down here next to the trade post. Plenty of stone, bit of gold. So a small gold deposit in the center, but that's a very small choke point. So, Aganels could be very useful. Grand winery now being built. Boomba spawned up here with some stone and berries as well. Grand winery is almost complete. Or not almost complete, far from it. Night Pits uh, research is still not exposed up here in the patches, but you got Tradewing Bazaar being researched. So, this is interesting. It's a little bit RNG, but we're gonna have to wait and see. Grand Winery is almost complete. Let's keep the House of Wisdom selected so we know what's going on. Byzantine player Reese Corpse to Feudal Age. Going for another cistern and some aqueducts. A handful of aqueducts. This help of gold and wood collection right there. Oh, and he merely went for. Ah, this is what I can see. He has two traders. He's also got a round of. Or Bedouin skirmishers. And of course, you have two traders active. It's not a good trade route. He's going for the market now to make it a good trade route. And he still has like, some stone, which is probably not going to be utilized. Nope, he utilizes it. 175 stone for what, 125 gold or 150 gold? The other exchanges are a little bit better, but stone is nice to have. He could go for a secondary town center. Don't know if going for the stone is going to be good or not, because all depends. Does it use it in the near future? If not, then it's probably not that good of an idea to actually go for that trade. He's going. He's using these uh, Bedouin skirmishers in the near future, as in now. If you have a bit of bonus versus all light infantry, that would be both archer and spearman. As well as, let's see, Byzantians can also get some mercenary units. Mercenary units you could eye is Royal Knight and Mercenary Horse Archer. If so they would do bonus damage from Mercenary Horse Archers. They could also do bonus damage versus Magidai and Desert Raiders. He has gone for a Mercenary Camp. He has researched was at Silk Road. He's getting some Javan Thors now. Those guys also classified as light, but they would also do. They receive more bonus damage in return. But they are similar to each other. Let's see, those two traders. Traders cost 150 gold, and each trip will provide him 72. So, pretty much one round trip will pay for himself. Golden Age Tier 1 active, giving a very powerful 10% of all collection rate of all resources. All right there, gets a good shot. These, uh... Oh wait, Light Infantry, not Light uh, Cavalry. I saw the uh, cavalry mention that was light was completely incorrect. He's taking bad damage there. They do have good base damage. Down throws, of course, a hard counter to them. They do 12 damage, but they do have 3 range armor, and they will take in return 
16 damage. Ugh, I suppose they're actually quite similar. Oh, they're all dead now. Another round of trades not available. He went for the food. He went for all everything. Probably the most ideal thing to get from the traders is probably the uh, traders. Talking. With the extra wood, he now has enough wood or stone for town center. He's more wood and he has a uh, town center. Not bad. Local doggo getting some fights on the traders. He could probably send the uh, Bedouin skirmish to deal with it. They are. The wolf is classified as a bitey infantry. I don't know if that means they receive bonus damage from anti light infantry. It may or may not. I guess uh, if the wolves, if it's any of those guys have to deal with them, we may see it. Wolf has 30 health. So if they, the two of them two shot it, that means they did 32 damage. But now we got horsemen everywhere causing issues. Well, that's just a scout. Got this town sort of going on up. Now we got a desert raider pull in the field. Try and get some anti cav. Oh, I saw only 8 damage there, which means the wolves are not classified as light infantry. They're just the bitey infantry classification. Which I don't think that actually even is hard code in the game. The description is independent of what the actual typing is. Golden Horn Tower now being pulled on a field, gaining some free mercenaries. Magenta has enough gold to age up. Needs a lot more food. The number of villagers on these berries now. With all the economic research as well. Right now I'm wondering if the wolf actually even has the infantry type typing. Would the bonus damage multipliers of anti-infantry would be applied like from the uh, sofas? The Malian sofas. Am I overthinking that now? Would the shinobi get bonus damage against uh, the wolf for being melee? Would the Japanese Otachi upgrade from Samurai do bonus damage for wolves? Very random questions. Horsemen moving up around here. Golden Horn Tire is almost complete. And there's age up going for economic wing growth, which also make all berry bush provide a hundred additional food. I think just going for uh, for the villagers. Not worrying about the berry capacity. Ground throwers get some decent damage onto the uh, desert raider, who is classified as range and has no inherent range armor. <laughs> One last berry bush remains, going for many olive groves now. There's actually plenty of berry bushes around the map, you can always claim up as well. Yellow's pretty much just relying on somewhat free mercenaries. Not really free, since you still have to actually prioritize collecting up the olive oil from certain sources, it's just a nice little bonus. After all, their berries, other than the olive oil effect, provide still the same old, not great food collection rate. Better than these skirmishers, does get a couple javelin throws there. Got a report there. Horsemen and Desert Rider push way forward. 
Of course, got some Vrangian guard here. Of course, I'm trying to focus on those Dragon Throwers. The Vrangian guard should actually try Berserk. You can see some focusing down the Skirmishers. So if he would have Berserked with a Vrangian guard, he could have got some extra damage there. He did do so far an upgrade in order to make them move faster while Berserking. But... Since they weren't taking, uh, they should, since they weren't taking any damage, they should have done it. Good little pick up there, sniping some of these horsemen. Their base damage is pretty good. They are veteran jump throws at the moment as well. Magenta's skate does get set ablaze. Magenta has gone from a crossbone to gain the Vrangian guard, which are still countered by the jump throwers. He's also going for some horsemen and camel lancers. Will both be a pretty good idea at the moment. One uh, trace has just got restocked. Bring in some uh, Bedouin swordsmen and Bedouin skirmishers. But right now, I think he's too busy focusing on the engagement. Those bring in the Bedouin swordsmen and skirmishers. Very good. Took time to traders. He could have pulled off the traders. Wait until he stabilizes. Elon's mix on in, but he's still getting overwhelmed a little bit. Bedouin Swordsmen or Dual Wooden Swordsmen with plus 4 damage versus melee, so in theory they should do bonus damage for wolves. Does go down. Jenna does have superior number of villagers thanks to the secondary town center. But it's starting to lose quite a bit of infrastructure. There's Berserking. Elam's also the high attack speed uh, men arms variant, so it's maybe not a great idea to use that against the Gilams. Sorry, so no. Crossbowmen. Fired away. Also good to see you again. It's been a while, hasn't it? Crossbow firing away. Gets good hits on the on the ranking guard. Over here to have these ranking guard engaging the Elon. Also may need to be garrison. Ranking guard taking some damage. Like I said, I'm so not your father. I don't think you have some sort of a fox kid. Wasn't that your profile picture of a cat? <laughs> or maybe I'm thinking about something different. Rangan Guard and Javan Throwers pushing way forward. An unusual composition, but it is a composition. After all, the Rangan Guard are just the meat, while the Skirmishers are just a good support unit to engage the cross wound, the counter of the Rangan Guard. Capturing up this. The traders are alive. Another round of trade has come on in. You can go for more Bedouin skirmishers and Bedouin swordsmen. I don't know how cost effective these guys are. I mean, each one is technically 75. Uh, let's take a look at their stats. They do, of course, uh, are coming upgrade with age ups. Let's see, crossbowmen, we can use in comparison to the Bedouin skirmisher. As same attack speed as crossbowmen, right now has 12 base damage. Or 12 damage total, which he has plus two range, so it's 10 damage. Same as Dragon Throwers. 80 health, so there's technically a bit more healthy. Of course, they're good against light infantry, so anything you're planning to use the Viral Archers or 
yeah, pretty much anything you plan to use with regular archers for, it definitely would be a good way to supplement your force. Moon speed is still standard spearman speed and archer speed. Plus 10 for light infantry is a nice little multiplier. And I think they're pretty cost effective in comparison to archers. If you think about it, if you just take the base damage of 10 archers in this age is what? Eight? No, six without the blacksmith upgrades. With, only, with slightly uh, faster attack speed, but nothing too significant. So I think the Bedouin Skirmishers may be pretty cost effective. So in theory, if you should always go for them if you get have them available. Just don't expect too much from a small group of them. They're just nice thing to help so many of force that's cost effective. And if we see any Bedouin swordsmen who can, looks like, build siege weapons. Never really thought about looking at that, but that is the case. Both damage, which is probably similar to men at arms. Their attack speed is the same as uh, Gilom's. Right now, damage is 10, so that's actually pretty good. Though they don't have the fast follow up attack. So the DPS is probably very similar. Health is. 186 for 195, so yeah, these guys have just play a more cost-effective, lightly armored uh, Gilon, so that's not a bad thing to mix on in as well. But yeah, probably cost-effective for 75 resources each. Those Gilons was, uh, what, 140, 160? 150. Let's take out the Camerotter there. Camerotters have no inherent armor. As I say, these units, Bedouin units may go down. He just needs to keep on running with these forces. Those forces did push forward a little bit. Find some awkward ducks. Right now, Machida has a uh, significantly larger amount of villagers. I suppose 14 is not significant, but a nice number. Batterim does go down there. Another round of trade is now available. Feels like every time I look back, there's another round of trade. He's up to 10 traders, I wonder, and he has another set of traders here. He's out of gold at the moment, but he has a bit of time. Garrison. These units are just trying to keep the distance. These guys are berserking, so the keep will rip them apart. He does intercept this force, moving them around. Right now, he's just playing Ring and Rosie. Majid has a decent force here, intercepting some yellow's forces. They got split up, but it's not good. Allows Majid to get a lot of free kills there. Uh, Sultan's Mamluks also research well. Takes out a spring gold there. Keeps a fine way. Picking out some crossbowmen for free. Better when swordsman gazes some of the Varangian guard. Which is backing off now. Fighting against a good number of Varangian guards. More crossbowmen are required. No, nope, they're not Imperial just yet. They're right now, they're in the castle. Spearman and Gilon trying to engage. The rank guard are doing quite well, breaking their way forward. Do not have the uh, unique one, Manjanki, or have to pronounce that. Gilon goes on down. Rank guard charts way forward. I think he's. I like his him using the berserking. Sometimes I feel like some players don't use it enough. But when pushing these towns like that, like to the town center itself, it's generally a bad idea because the range forces. Does get the siege weapon built, gets a great follow there. Siege weapon is nice and protected. His rank guard again disintegrated. Excellent hit there. No weapon upgrade, just fortified. Second site has been decaptured. Magenta still says keep going. We got the Creo Siphon being the flying field. You could try shanking the uh, Creo Siphon. Or Fire Siphon, I sometimes like to call it because I love Asian mythology. 
He's another veteran swordsman still there. He has another round of traders available, but it just got cycled through, which does include another round of traders. It has what's more veteran swordsmen. And now we got this keep taking severe damage. Two more Creo siphons push way forward. Excellent Magnell hit there. He does not fall in back. Mechid also has a good core of villagers. Mechid also has, has twice the number of village or military units in the field. Quality is very much fair in Mechid as well. So members of all, you keep olive oil units do not get added up in there. So there's not a whole lot of jam. I know there's been a lot of jam throwers. Salt's man looks like to be activated on some of those crossbow backlines. Spearman's trying to get disintegrated. I've got a Maganel placement somewhere. Some of the forced to push forward, using the free siege engineers to quickly pop down some fatter rounds and cleave through the stone wall, among other things. This is where the Maganel place is trying to be deployed on now. He has nothing that's really stopped the better rounds mode. He's just trying to repair up the keep as they keep it up. He will get it upgraded, but hey, I think it will go down. Probably should have canceled the upgrade. Ground throwers is getting some damage there on the crossbow. The camera is pulling the field, crawling the Golden Horn Tower. And everything else is moving over, but needed the Javan Thor still in this region. Losing good number of villagers through this incursion. And Magenta's back on off. Mostly just crossbow there, a couple Bedouin skirmishers. Either way, camera have no inherent armor. So these crossbow should be set a second round. Camels that don't have inherent armor, though they do have pretty high base health. And their attack speed is actually the same as a Gilom's, barring the follow-up with sw uh, swipes. Camel does go down there, more melee armor for the Ayyubids. Has more Bedouin swordsmen available. More stone walls going on up. He is also collecting up those berries. These berries down here are unobtained, which either player can make good use of them. This villager may want to fall back, but we do have a keep here. And if three four does manage to build some walls here. It does go down. He's garrison the keep, does. We also got an outpost there for yellow. No weapon upgrade. is getting a little bit tied up on the keep. There's a bit of oversight. Those are putting a bit of stone there. I also tried to wall in that trading post there. Partially was successful. Which is not going for another keep. Should keep this trade secure. Trader does go down. There's 21 active traders. I wonder how much that was from the uh the bazaar, or was that from actually some of them actually mainly pull some of those out? I see no traders queued up there, so that maybe all, all these traders move from the bazaar. Oh, so there was a Creo siphon there. Ground throw is going to go on down. Villagers attempt to build a keep here. 
and it's starting to berserk there. Ripping apart these villagers very quickly. They're all down. He does not get fully built. Press those. Bringing guard does go down there. Yell's trying to stonewall this trade line. He's, trying to, he's already walled in this side and this side, so he has to break through all these walls. Nice flame splash there. Of course, these wall walls are ghosted, so they don't take any damage just yet. Does not. He does break through. Good Maganal hits there. Just push way forward through the sector, which in the course does keep his trade active. Or engineering company now being built. Which of course, will give him some free advanced research for his mercenaries. Let's see. Jumpers should get precision training, I think it's called. Give them what plus three damage. Ooh, great hits there by the Magnell emplacement. Let's see, what else the other thing is? Camel riders, they'll get the additional uh, camel buffs, like increased camel armor and the uh, camel support. And the last one is, what, the Grenadier? I don't think they get access to anything special. But Grenadiers are still pretty nice. There's an IB players mostly going out infantry, but we now have a good number of horsemen here. More horsemen being brought in, so I'm probably going to get not to pull out Grenadiers. Horsemen trying way forward. They do have all the blacksmiths research. So I have a feeling he's going to try to age up the master smiths. Speaking of which, we see the age up. Yes, we do see the age up. So it's not popped there. And yeah, I was guessing correctly, the master smiths. This will immediately get him all of his final blacksmith research, which then be a little bit more expensive. So it will save him a pretty penny. Just try and click a blacksmith to reference. Can't find one. So we're gonna take some damage there. Got a couple of the skirmishers way over here as well. There's the age ups. Ah, oh, yeah. I could just highlight it there. So each one's cost about 500 resources. I'll save 1500 resources. A pretty good rebate upon aging up. And instant and. Convenient. One of the traders to go down to the skirmishers. And now, of course, got the elite crossman research for the Byzantians. Which I'll say is somewhat rare to see. You don't really see elite crossbowmen by Byzantians all too often. Hand candy does go down. Ayubet's hand candy is came quite nice with the Sultan's Mumluks. Of course, it'll be nice if they don't just didn't. Do get fed to the grinder. All these hand cannons going down. Now because Gilan's a spear pushing along the flank. He's trying to completely circle everything. Maganel may go down. Frank Guard trying to accept. Maganel now took a hit but not getting hit. Which is pushing forward with now the rest of his forces, and we'll be able to get the Mega No there. Bombard or cannon fires away, destroy the mining pit. Mega No pushing forward. Oh, yeah, these are Royal Cannons, the foreign engineering company. Oh, a bombard. Mega no will go down. Royal Cannons take some damage. Royal Cannons trying to provide some fire support, but not really anti-infantry tool. They're anti-structure, they tend to overlap a little bit too much with the Forge Company's weak weak cows. Massive bees on the pulling field, that should be very useful. They may be over investing these Royal Cannons, this is quite a bit of investment. 900 olive oil, times 1. 3 was the pulling field, so you spent 2700 olive oil on those royal cannons but he probably could have really got nest of bees and deploy out a swarm of them bombard being pulled out there and we've got the keeping sapshot over here now this is where the royal cannons be useful let's 
some pretty good holes inside the keep. Horseman getting by the ranking guard. Those villagers are now running. We have elite horsemen here, over here. It does have everything elite, barring the spearman crossbow, which is not really focusing on. He does need some spring galls. He doesn't. Ibis tend not to rely on siege workshops because they can just produce on the field. They have free proof siege engineers. And so he has no real way to quickly get a spring gold queued up. Does he have the mess of these there? And can you guys push forward? Salty Mammoth really does affect him quite nicely, getting up to 44 damage. He does not have chemistry research just yet. Yeah, let's just use more of this gold here. Regina has his villagers down here. Not much gold left there. He does have a handful of traders. 21. 23. The bazaar providing a good number of traders at a reasonable rate of 150 for two of them. Effectively 75 each. There's a Ayubids as well as Absidinus. He already has discounted traders, so. Even more discount traders. Golden Age 4 deactivated. I don't think it's been a while since I last heard that sound effect. So now it's got the Golden Age 3. And those one gets cheaper siege weapons. Horseman charged with forward does find the Lumitani who stuns a good formation of them. We don't see Incineroes just yet for yellow. He may want to get that. Does Incineroes affect Javelin throwers? Or assume so. I'm not so sure. Couple hand cannoneers push right forward. As soon as other infrastructure start to go down, Gilongs push right forward some hand cannoneers. Gilongs do have higher health than regular mana arms, so they can be a very good front line even if they get countered by the crossbowmen. Varying and guarding person do actually have less health than mana arms. There. Force him push away four against the damage to uh, crossbone. Yellow's pushing a big wave of villagers. He's trying to get a four to keep going. Got a massive wave of reinforcements there, but of course he does not have siege workshop, which means he can't fuel up any siege weapons. He has to build them. This keep looks like it will be built. Don't see enough forces here from the chip to stop it. He has a decent, decent amount of wood, not a lot of food, nor cold. And Magenta does back of the game now. This is a great scene. Take a watch in. Not the next replay.